Good afternoon and welcome from Hillheads as we have this latest matchup between the Whitley Bay Beacons and the Grimsby Wolves. I'm Adam Mackman and I'll be calling this game for you as uh, the Beacons second division side will make their seasonal debut for the Wolves. This is their first, sorry, second outing having already faced witness but uh, it's a 5 nothing loss which they took a lot of heart from and uh, did very well indeed. So it looks like Tanya Royce is going to centre for the Beacons with Joy Hurst who spent a lot of last season out injured. She'll be happy to be back on the ice. And Emma Taylor Lonsdale over to Erin Donnett on the far side. Picked off by the Beacons. Slip forward. But it's going to be regained by the Wolves who bank it off the board, get it over to Domit. Alex Brell comes across. Georgia Wilkinson's out there as well now. She's uh, been appointed one of the captains for the Beacons this season. That's uh, just reward for all our hard work last season as well. This is only her second season playing hockey. Joy Hurst dangles through the circle. Ooh, gets a shot on net. It's a good pad save by Ruth Palmer to get it away. The Wolves trying to sweep it clear. Centre around the boards. Georgia Wilkinson closes down. Lily Hutchinson trying to get something on net, but it's cleared well and blasted down the ice. No ice in. Alex Prowl just gets beaten to it by Emma Taylor Lonsdale, who gets a shot off, and she forces a save out of Jade Yip, who makes her debut for the Beacons, a new goalie for this season. Draw taken by Jane Skelton, who previously has played for the Beacons, but in the Elite League two years ago, took last season off, but returns to the ice. She'll be one of the main leaders on this team as well, with all the experience she has as Caitlin Eastwood cuts inside. Good defender though by Wardle. Shot on net though from Caitlin. Lily Hutchinson oh, sends it through the crease. Cleared away. This would wind him one up, but it's cleared. And Susie Rutherford has to back check, or back skate rather, to get onto that one. Two minutes played here then. Apologies if I do uh, lose my voice at some stage of this broadcast. I have been fighting a pretty bad cold all week. This Warder will blast that one away. Lisa Eden, fresh off the bench, she will get there first. She's converted onto D at the mid season last year. Prefers it there, having spent the majority of her career prior to that as a forward. She'll retrieve the puck once again. Ariana Harrison looking to use her pace and she'll steal that one in. She's got a bit of support there with her. Wardle does a good job there of breaking the play up and it's swept away by Ruth Palmer. Goes into the corner. So cleared, rink wide, Lisa Eden will regather. Good can put control by Iona but almost stolen by the Wolves as Wardle will regain possession. Should be closed down but has the time to clear. Picked off by the Beacons. Good bit of tenacity there by Emma Taylor Lonsdale as she enters the zone. Lisa Calvert, the senior official for this game. Oh, it's a nice play by Iona. Gets a shot off and scores. Stole the puck in the corner. And then uh, cut through a crease. And I think it was off the backhand in the end. But Iona Harrison gets her first goal of the season. Opens her account. 
and the teams as well. So, 1 0 lead for the Beacons then. This top line that's out there, centred by Tanya Royce, her and Georgia Wilkinson for a really strong partnership last season. So, it's good to see those two staying together. They've added Captain Joy Hurst into that as well. Nice. What are two personnel changes from last season as the Wolves try to control in the high slot? Tool helps it on its way. As Joy Hurst breaks on the left wing, banks it off the boards. Georgia Wilkinson will give chase. And Ingham gets there first, so good defending from her, used of the boards to help her out as well. Eastwood keeps it inside. Fanned effort by Georgia Wilkinson, comes back out into the low slot for Tanya Roy. She couldn't control, but Emma Taylor Lonsdale will, and she looks to chase it down. Recovered by the Beacons, though, as Eastwood will gather. Almost five minutes played here then, one nothing lead to the Beacons, who this time last year won their opening game against Kingston Diamond C. And uh, then had a ridiculously tough set of fixtures, which saw him out of promotion contention but uh, ended the season well and there's a lot of promise for this season ahead with new players coming in and it's only one or two players that have moved on since last season possibly the most uh, high profile being Jordan Troop who's now on a two way with Solway Sharks and Caledonia Steel Queens City Burnett will control Finds her mother there, number 23. They often play on the same line together for the Wolves. Wolves have arrived here short benched, a lot of them uh, unavailable. It's going to be nice and cool. So that'll bring the play back down. So we'll get a face off to the left of what is uh, Ruth Palmer's goal as she's looking at it. She took the draw against uh, Nikki Burnett. And Amelia Hutchison sends one on that. Ruth Palmer helps it on its way over onto the far side. Susie Rowford winds one up. It's blocked. And cleared. Nikki Burnett gets under control, sends it out wide, but picked off by Susie, who will clear his own. Just out of our reach of Helen Ingham. It's collected by Laura Wardle, who finds her sister. Nikki Burnett with a stretch pass. Grimsby working well here to get it inside the offensive zone. Tilly Burnett and then a shot from Jazz Adams. That's going to be covered up by JD Yip and we'll get an offensive zone face off for the Wolves. Good response this by the uh, visiting side. Taylor Lonsdale with the draw against Diana Harrison. Becca Borman is uh, on this near side. She's on Iona's wing. Oh, no, it's Paige Brooks, in fact, who's uh, on this line. And so that would have been uh, utilising two fast wingers. And Matteo Lonsdale collides into Alex Prowl, who this is her second season with the Beacons, had a very strong campaign last year. Good to see her back as Iona tries to burst down those right wing boards, but good defending there by Emma Taylor Lonza on the far side. Indeed, it was and number three, who's very much the danger threat for the Wolves and led the team in scoring last year. Well, it's controlled out of a D by Caitlin Eastwood. Helped 
on its way by Bryony Watson. Beacons with a stretch pass trying to clear, but uh, we collected at centre red by the Wolves. And the table on Zell up there as well. Grimsby with only two lines, so we'll be asking a lot of them throughout the game. 11 skaters, so that's two full units plus a spare player. Looks like at least three, three lines for the Beacons from what I've seen so far. That's going to be another icing call on the Wolves. So, almost eight and a half minutes played here. It's one nothing to the Beacons. It was a good draw by Tanya Royce. As Emma Taylor Lonsdale gets a return pass from Watson. She's uh, tangles with one of the Beacons defenders and goes down. Wardle collects in the neutral zone. Sent forward. Tanya Royce will drop back and gather. Has a quick look over her shoulder to see who's out there with her. Stretch pass out wide. Collected into the feet of Joy Hurst. Who, a nice little poke check coming in there. Disrupts the play. Pass through the crease. Comes back out. Uh, it's going to be offside there as Caitlin Eastwood brings it back inside. But a uh, good bit of play by the owner Underdown initially. As back and away we go. Beacon's top line back out there. Joy Hurst sends one on net. Blocker save by Ruth Palmer. Sends it wide of the goal. Uh, D helping her out to clear around the boards. Shot on net. Oh, floated in. Or oh, it just popped out the glove there. It was a, certainly took a weird flight path through the air there. And uh, Joy Hurst, ever the opportunist, who scored the. Only goal for her side when these two sides last met last season. It was a one-all draw. Well, but uh, Grimsby took the lead in and were good value for their draw. It was a much improved season last year. And when everyone's available, Grimsby have got a pretty strong team who can compete with most now. They gave uh, Witness a decent game, as I say, a couple of weeks ago, who finished second last year. Jane Skelton with the draw. She'll go into the corner. Looks like she's got Amelia Hutchison and Becca Borman on her line with her on the two wing positions. So a couple of pacey options for her to pass to. But Jane, who will utilise that experience, she's had a great career in the women's game. Good to see her back this season. And 66 is uh, always one of the best numbers to have anyway, isn't it, with Mario Lemieux. Having used it, but I believe it was from Ian Cooper from the Durham Wasp days, why she's chosen that number. Well, nobody said that uh, Jane was perfect. <laughs> All joking aside, though, she's uh, going to be one of the top players for the team this season, I'm sure. Amelia Hutchison fans on the pass. I think the puck just got caught up along the boards and the snow. Nice little dangle there by, or deke really, by uh, Iona. Fired it off the boards, but wasn't far off the target. Becca Borman with a good stick to try and break the play up. Puck will bounce off Amelia's feet and come back out, and she'll uh, have to obviously hold on as the Beacons retreat. Eight and a half minutes left in the period as... Shepard will gather, sends it in on net. Oh, took a funny bounce there off the uh, yip, off the pads, and back out. But Beacons with numbers back there to help out. Good play on the far side. <laughs> 
had to skate in Becca Borman who collects that one back down. And Harrison will regather. Stretch pass off the boards. Cleared by Helen Ingham. And Matteo Lonsdale will dart down the left wing. Nice poke check there by Caitlin. Dry Watson will clear. Picked off in the neutral zone by. Caitlin, who's everywhere at the minute, a good shift from her, this. i say one of the real standout players last year, made her debut mid-season last year and uh, in the seniors, and has just grown within the game ever since, still playing her junior career with the club as well, as that effort's shot over, helped on its way by year, picked him to just pop up out the glove, but it was a good effort. And Matteo Alonso with the, effort, with the shot there, that one was blocked, I think it was Bry Watson who had that first effort though There's Laura Warden will get something on that then cleared by Leona Underdown that now it was uh, Domit who had the shot before as that one goes in that's taken full force then the other effort oh I thought it got in for a second there from Taylor Lonsdale she's still hacking away to try and force that one home but Jade Yip not to be beaten, but uh, that was a good effort there. The Grimsby almost crept in in the post, but they'll settle for the offensive zone face-off with 6.15 left in the period. But uh, it was a good passage of play. That's the closest they've come to breaching the net. Watson forces a kick save and the Wolves have scored Erin Domit pushed home the rebound and that uh, pressure did pay off couldn't quite get the job done when they entered the zone but from the resulting offensive zone face off the Wolves have tied it up here so 6.09 left in the period and one one all game. Rink wide off the boards will be collected by Caitlin Eastwood. Out of the reach of Joy Hurst, but she'll close down. So we'll clear. Nice shot on net, forces the uh, the pad save from Roof. That was Georgia Wilkinson with that effort. Who nice burst through the middle there. That will come out. That will force Alex Brawl to have to retreat. Put comes through. Helen Ingham will gather. Joy Hurst trying to force the turnover. Swipe clear. That will be enough to come out the zone. That will allow the Wolves to push out. Tilly Burnett sends with it on there. Good job by the youngster as well there on the near side. Joy Hurst will go it alone as we can do in the middle of a line change, but just fired over the uh, angle of the goal frame. We'll collect her own rebound. Works it back, Tilly Burnett will collect though and she'll carry out. The youngest player on the team. I'd say she's uh, got both her mother and her Anzi on the team, which is uh, a nice story in itself, really. That sort of family connection with, at the club. Collected by Georgia Wilkinson who will enter the zone it's deflected off Kenny Tuggle on the way through Jane Skelton collects now Helen Ingham will go towards her forces the turnover 
Jazz Adams comes across, looking to try and help it on its way, but quick as a flash, it's stolen back by Amelia Hutchinson, who gets a shot off. It's in the low slot, and it's poked home by Jane Skelton, who gets her first goal of the season. So having been pegged back to one all, the Beacons not taking long before they re-establish their one-goal lead. Persistence from Jane Skelton to poke that one home, but a good little setup play from the high slot as well by Amelia Hutchinson, who got the puck towards her. We seem to shuffle it towards net to for her. Brian Watson gets the effort on net, forces the pad save. Comes through again. Grimsby looking to get a second equaliser and they have. Evan Domit. So no sooner had they got a goal behind than they've got things back level to two all. What a game this is turning out to be in this opening period. Nothing can separate the sides. That was the case a year ago. So it was a absorbing one all draw last year and whilst it lacked goals there was a very fair result of two evenly matched sides and this so far this has been another one as they go in on that once again or oh. and Taylor Lonsdale just flashing wide there wasn't far off though might have even took a nick off uh, Jade Yip's blocker and just went wide I think she might have got a piece of that and Harrison will burst clear Gets in behind Laura Wardle, but cleared by Ruth Palmer as Iona just about keeps her feet together there. She was looked like she was losing balance. She's still able to play the puck. It's end-to-end -end stuff right now. It's uh, one team attack and score, and then the next team will do the same. Iona under down, makes it clear. Anna Harrison, and she drags Pat past the Wardle. Paige Brooks looking to get a shot off, and will do it the second attempt as Aaron Domit got enough on to the first effort to block it. Put Doug out the corner, or oh, Paige Brooks trying to stab that one home, but just went wide. I don't know if it came off a Grimsby stick on the way through. And Domit will help it on its way. Well done by Iona Harrison again in the corner just to break the play up, forcing the turnover. Now she will capitalise on it, but gets outnumbered as Emma Taylor Lonsdale out wide to Dry Watson. Good composure there by Eastwood, but in the end the puck just wouldn't settle for her. Allowed Dry Watson, the Grimsby captain, to force a turnover. And then another effort by Emma Taylor Lonsdale forcing the pad save. Joy Hurst, who will send one rink wide, comes off the stick of Georgia Wilkes. It was just behind her a little bit, and that's going to be called for an offside now, with a minute 34 left in the period. But uh, I say, a lot of action to uh, to follow here. We have to retreat into their zone as it's picked off by Tanya Royce, who will feed Joy Hurst. She dances through the slot and scores. And I don't know whether it was Georgia Wilkinson who got the final touch there. I think it was. I think Joy found her at the back post, and now it's 3 2 Beacons. This game, so the momentum swinging from one end to the other. Skelton wins the draw. We'll find Becca Boardman. Helen Ingham will drop back and gather. She's closed down by Skelton though, and she picks that one off. Lisa Eden, who took a shot from the point. Nikki Burnett will close, will uh, break it up, and then uh, gets it away to Jazz Adams, who will clear the zone. Lisa Eden forward. And Ricky Burnett once again will tip in. 
Gaz Adams it's out of her reach. And then the follow up. So all tips back in. Picked off by Lisa Eden, who will clear. Nice control by Becca Boardman. Who does a nice little pirouette with Jazz Adams closing her down. She has to hurry up the pass and in the end releases it. But Jane Skelton there to help her out and even up the numbers somewhat. Collected by Caitlin Eastwood. Who clears along the boards. This should be just about the last action of the period. And what a period it has been as well. Five goals. Beacons taking a lead on three separate occasions. They will go into a break slightly ahead, but Grimsby not out of this by any means, and uh, they've proved to be worthy opponents so far. We're going to take a short break. Be right back with you in around about three minutes' time. Thank you. Welcome back to Hillheads then for a start of the second period and what has been a thoroughly enjoyable and absorbing first period here. It's a 3-2 lead to the Beacons, but Grimsby playing their part in it as Jade Wheeler. First, first game back since getting that season-ending injury on opening day last year. It's been out over a year, so it's great to see her back out there. Emma Taylor Lonsdale loses her foot in as she cuts inside. 
Yeah, and Harrison with a stretch pass, almost picked off by Tilly Barnett. Attempted poke check, though, almost capitalised by Paige Brooks on the far side. Tilly Burnett looking to break out here, but Alex Browell is back. Almost got unnumbered until Caitlin Eastwood was there to help out. Karen Domit, who's been a live wire for the Wolves so far early on. Took a goal well. Another Wardle. Blasted around the boards, but Iona quick to pick off the, the puck. Attempted wrap around. But uh, ran into the pads of Ruth Palmer and then I think helped out as well by another Wolves player back there, which is Emma Taylor Lonsdale. Got a very good, strong two way game, Emma. Good, strong skater. At the University in Sheffield at the moment. One of the uh, younger players on the team. Iona sends it across. Bit of frustration there from her as pass wasn't quite what she uh, intended. Sets uh, high standards for herself, does Iona. Great competitive nature. That's Georgia Wilkinson. Sets it up behind the net. Oh, almost getting set to get a shot on net, but good defending by Leona and the down, who poked it away. Broke that play up. Matthews looks strong on D. Leona. Shot from the high slot from Tanya Royce, but again, good defending by Leona Underdown. A bit of persistence there as she wouldn't give up on that one, got it away, and then eventually the Wolves can't ease out as Jazz Adams return the quick pass to Nicky Burnett. Eastwood will gather. Slip forward, and Joy Hurst will capitalise on it. She bursts into the offensive zone, goes around two defenders, gets it on goal, gets a shot off, but fires wide. Sent over to the left wing position for Jazz Adams. Leona under down. Controls around the end boards. And on the far side, Alex Browell banks it off the boards to find Joy Hurst. Good defending on the far side by Laura Wardle, who breaks the play up. Again, sticking to uh, the Beacons captain. And then collected by Nikki Burnett, who will clear. Three and a half minutes played here, or just about still 3-2 to the Beacons. Another Wardle off the boards on the far side. James Skelton skips around one challenge. It was from Francesca Shepherd. Still in control. Works it back to Eastwood. Big rebound and then cleared away. Work back for Nikki Burnett. Just had a reach of uh, Shepard, I think, and then almost squeezed home, but whistle's gone. Jane Skelton, whose daughter Poppy is in the uh, Beacons under 16 side. Got a bright future in the game as well. That next generation of Beacons players coming through, she's going to be a part of that. And, so hockey truly does uh, run in the family. Nice little poke out to get around Islay North End, I think it was. And then she gets a shot off. There's Emma Taylor Lonsdale and her second one, but Susie Riverford, I think, did enough to put her off. Bry Watson helps her out. Got another shot up towards goal, but again, took a deflection, took a lot of a sting out the uh, effort, so it's good defending by the Beacons. Banked off the boards. Comes back out as Emma Taylor Lonsdale gathers in the neutral zone. Again, showing that good two-way game that she has. And she's quick to get back and help out her deep. Well, as any good centre should, but she does it well. And Tilly Burnett getting a piece of that, helping to break the play up and collected on the far side by 
is Le North, and or almost did. Is stolen on the far side. It was so well, I think it was up from the back. Indeed, it was. And Beacons trying to keep possession inside the offensive zone, but they'll have to check back with the put crossing the line, coming back out. It was Iona Harrison on the far side. And she will force a turnover. And then England goes with her. Oh, shot from the low slot from Paige Brooks, but well defended by Tyrrell. And then Puck comes loose, but Roof covers up, and we shall get a face off with that. Uh, five minutes 40 gone in the second period. Still 3 2 beacons. I wish these two sides would meet more often throughout the season. That's not always the case because uh, in the Elite League, everybody plays each other four times, twice home, twice away, but it's a, uh, a six-team league. It's an eight-team league. It means that everybody only plays each other twice, once home, once away, but always tend to be good games between the Beacons and the Wolves. Particularly here. I say it was a one all draw last year. But an even contest as you could uh, ever wish to see. Nice turn by Caitlin Eastwood. Good control from her. Plays it into a corner. Alex Brow will come across. Paige Brooks is with her, but tries to feed Iona Harrison through the middle. Kenny Turrell broke the play up and tipped forward. Emma Taylor Lonzo skips past. Caitlin Eastwood gets a shot on net and forces Jade Yip into the save. She'll hold on and will get a face-off in the beacon zone. Just over eight and a half, sorry, six and a half minutes played in the second period. Tanya Royce to take the draw for the beacons against Nikki Burnett of the Wolves. And it's Tanya who wins it, and the Beacons will push out, but Grimsby regain possession at centre red. Laura Wardle will send it across for Leona Underdown. Georgia Wilkinson almost stealing in there. To say her development and progress, it's been an upward trajectory over the last year. Both her and Tanya Royce have done so well. And this, uh, cuts back inside, gets a shot off, but flashes across the face of goal and away. Joy Hurst in the corner. Work back. Ooh. Lucky Burnett trying to tangle with uh, Georgia Wilkinson there, just trying to tie her up. And now we'll get a break on here. The Wolves puck not settling though. And in the end, Jack Adams just has to dump in. And the Beacons were recovering and getting numbers back there. Lucky Burnett gets something towards net, but. Again, Lisa Eden was positioned well. She'll blast it down. Laura Wardle will come across. Banked off the boards. It will come back out. These two sides will meet again next month in Grimsby. The Mets a week apart last season. It was a nice play there by Georgia Wilkinson. Again, it's been a bright spark for the Beacons in this game. Joy Hurst. It's a two against one here, but couldn't quite pick out. Georgia Wilkinson in the end, there was the covering defender there. Shot from distance, I think it was from, from Caitlin Eastwood. Joy Hurst. Off the end boards into the corner. Will be collected by the Wolves there, trying to get it away, but Puck getting caught under the skates of Georgia Wilkinson. Collected by Caitlin Eastwood at centre red. Sends it across to Susie Rutherford. Jazz Adams and Francesca Shepard pushing out. To a far side, Joy Hurst looking to cut back inside. Ice opens up a bit, goes round the last defender, which is under down. Fires comes off the shoulder of Ruth Palmer and into the corner. Hurst will collect. Eastwood again floats one in, it bounces towards goal and covered up by the pads of Ruth Palmer. We have almost nine minutes played here. And if you know reactions back home, please feel free to join in. Oh, 
Well won by Bryony Watson. But straight away that four check from the Beacons, forcing them to retreat. Wolves unable to clear the zone. Ben Skelton on the far side. Bank off the boards, comes over to Tilly Burnett. Shuffles the pass forward, but Amelia Hutchison will pounce on it before it could reach Evan Tomit. Beacons will use the opportunity to make a couple of personnel changes then. Lisa Eden and Islay North End will come on in D. Using 5D here today, the Beacons. And three full forward lines. I think uh, Evan Domit took that one full force in the ankle there, but it was a bit of a cry as uh, it hit her, but she'll carry on. So we'll. Lisa Reed on the far side. Works it free off the boards. Erin Domit almost capitalising on it. Puck just stopping dead on her row. And Millie Hutchinson will feed Becca Borman on this near side. And Ingham doing well to keep with her. Still with Becca Borman though, using that pace to good effect. She'll have to play the puck out the zone to hold on to possession. The pass wasn't on. And she was trying to pick out... Uh, is like, uh, sorry, Iona Harrison is as a uh, Aaron Domit's going to get a uh, roughing call here. Perhaps it was a bit of a shove to the the face of Iona. Yeah, it does look like it. it's going to be roughing. So I, I didn't say it, but I was just thinking we hadn't had a penalty called all game, and there we have it. So a first power play opportunity for either side. Goes the way of um, the Beacons as Eastwood gets a shot from the point. Goes through traffic. Ruth Palmer gets it away. Comes back out to Eastwood. Also got a nice releasing pass for Emma Taylor Lonsdale, but good challenge by Jane Skelton. She'll get the shot off and then heavy collision into the boards. There's some concern. She is upon her knees though. But. Good to see some Beacons players going over to check she's OK as well. I think it was just quite simply she went at pace and the challenge was always going to slow down that momentum. And she just ran out of ice in the end, heavy collision into the boards, but she seems OK. She's going to take the draw, which is the main thing. But that was a good short-handed breakaway, breakaway there for the Wolves. That would have been a great opportunity for them to tie the game up. I think they're telling... Emma, she has to go back to the bench. I'm not quite sure, maybe just to check she's OK after that uh, challenge into the boards, but uh, I don't think it was the uh, concussion because I think the primary point of contact was her knee that went into the boards, but either way, Lisa Calvert tended to go back to the bench. Big rebound, second one, but Ruth Palmer stays strong, will cover up. Minute 38 left on this Beacons power play. Couldn't really get set on that first time they were in the offensive zone. A quick breakout by the Wolves. And we'll see Emma Taylor Lonsdale back out there. They'll want to utilise their pace once again to try and repeat the move. There's some, a lot of changes. Lisa Calvert's not quite happy, I think. Maybe a little bit too late. Uh, she's saying come back. got three players out there Grimsby haven't they I think that's maybe the issue is three players did come off yeah Jazz Adams is coming back and she's explaining to the coaches but yeah there's only three players definitely come off and well presumably only two came on and then Ingham's out there now they've got five but then I think she's saying that ah uh, yeah they're saying Jazz Adams needs to come off So Helen Ingham is coming in. Jazz Adams is going back to the bench. Bit of confusion there, but I think it was she was saying, Lisa, that the the change was too late, and that's why she wanted it to come back as Joy Hurst tries to control that in mid-air. Always very difficult to execute, but she gave it a go nonetheless. 
Jane Skelton will drop back. Eastwood's on the puck. Collected by Wilkinson. That was a nice little uh, deke as she cut through and cut past the challenge. And then Ruth Palmer will cover that one up with a minute and three seconds left on this Beacon's power play. Now they can bring Jazz Adams back into the game with Hannah Ningham coming back to the bench. Well, presumably they must have been playing with three defenders on that last shift. So Emma Taylor Lonsdale doing a good job there of trying to hurry the puck handlers up at every opportunity. An intelligent player. Look back. Puck comes through. Again, Emma Taylor Lonsdale in possession now. She'll enter the offensive zone with speed, cuts inside, gets a shot off. Maybe took a nick off the outside of the blocker there. Puck getting caught a little bit behind Tanya Royce, but has the time to clear. Laura Wardle will collect on her own blue line. Dumps it back in, a shout of no, because it's uh, no icing, of course, when you're short-handed. 18 seconds left, in fact, less than that now on that power play. In fact, there we go, have it, back to full strength. So it was a good kill, that, by the Wolves. With just over seven and a half minutes left in the period. It's still 3-2 beacons, no goals in this period so far, but back we go down into the Wolves' zone. Good draw by Iona Harrison, gets it out to the wide left position. Caitlin Eastwood fires on net, all just behind Iona Harrison. Controlled by Erin Domit, who will clear. Domit again, trying to feed Emma Taylor Lonsdale, it's a three against one here. Gets a shot off, but JG Yip will hold on. Uh, it was good effort. So they uh, had time there, Grimsby, but they'll settle for the offensive zone face off once again. Good draw by Iron Harrison once again. And Ingham will clear. Puck getting caught there in the neutral zone, but Nikki Burnett, who was brought, sorry, Kenny Turrell, who was brought down there even, looked at the official to say there's a no call as Francesca Shepard gets a shot off. Helped wide by JD. Comes back through into the low slot, but it's cleared by Islay Northend. Kenny Turrell will go again off the boards over to Shepard, but Puck will to Caitlin Eastwood, she'll go up in again and will control, will take it behind the net to allow her team to get set and open the play up a little bit. Iona Harrison on the far side as she tangles with Kenny Tool. Tilly Burnett will dump in and give chase. Bring some energy to his second line, does Tilly, as I say, youngest player on the team. Never stop skating though. Puck comes through. Oh, nice pass from out wide by Georgia Wilkinson, trying to pick Paige Brooks in the mid slot. And then controlled by Nikki Burnett, who enters the zone, but Susie Rutherford clears only as far as Francesca Shepard, whose effort is blocked and sent wide by. Lisa Eden. Georgia Wilkinson will advance. That's in behind Laura Wardle. Helen Ingham comes across, but it's 
still with the Beacons forward. Holds on well, good puck possession this by the youngster, gets the shot off, wide. Laura Wardle just out of her reach. Georgia was onto it in a flash, but then Laura's got a chance to clear at the second attempt. Lisa Eden does a good job of keeping it inside the zone, and then Laura will clear once again. Brani Watson will, fresh off the bench, will close down. It won't be icing, it was a genuine pass because she was off the bench in time. Puck gets caught up in the net in, otherwise that was quite a handy break out there for the Wolves. They had an odd player rush. But, you know, once again, we'll get the offensive zone face off with 4.36 remaining in the period. And Matela Lonsdale with the draw. Ooh, shot from Evan Domit once again and just flashes wide of the glove side. And then we're going to get a roughing call on Jade Yip, I think, here for shoving the back. Emma Tona Lonsdale doing a good job in front of the net. And, oh, interference. No, we're going to call goalie interference on Emma. I thought. I, I thought they'd seen the uh, shove in the back from, uh, from Jade, but. Of course, goalies can clear their, their crease, but, um, well, it's, it could have probably been a 50-50 that one, but Beacons have their second power play then of the game. Good draw again by Iona Harrison. Shots closed down. Brian Watson looking to get away. She will do. Jane Skelton comes across. Similar when they had the last breakout. Puck just bounces up a little bit off the stick of Jade Yip, but defence helping her out a bit. Give away. Watson almost capitalising on it. I mean, Domit trying to close down as well. Again, Brian Watson will win back. And then Leona under down doing a good job. She will push out. Collected by Jane Skelton. Near yeah, Jane. So quick to read the danger on those. Uh, Short-handed breakaway, she's quick to get back and help out defensively. Looks back. Caitlin Eastwood, shot, hits Leona under down, kick save, comes out. She's alone in the slot there, Iona Harrison, but couldn't really get the shot off. Shot from Shane Skelton, it again deflects wide. What good goaltending by Ruth Palmer, who's uh, they stood firm during these uh, penalty kills. That comes through. And uh, again, stopped by the pads as uh, Beacons try to go five hole with 42 seconds left on the power play. I did just hesitate there. I wasn't sure where the puck had ended up. What is it? Quite a chilly hill heads this afternoon colder outside and the temperatures have certainly dropped since I was last in here two weeks ago. Tanya Royce trying to work it back, shot from the point, it's charged down by the Wolves as they will push out. 30 seconds left for them to kill. Becca Borman collects, tries to feed Tanya Royce through the middle, Bryony Watson picks off, she'll dump in. Wolves will use the opportunity to try and set up in the offensive zone, but the Beacons quickly regain possession. Nice play by Bryony Watson once again, breaking the play up, sweeping the puck away along the boards. Tanya Royce darts towards goal, but Watson once again, good shift from her. Kenny Turrell, Turrell gets back there as uh, Wolves are back to full strength, so they've pulled off both penalties here. A lot of credit should go to them, they've defended well when they've needed to. There's Jane Skelton, oh, put under a bit of pressure there, and Taylor Lonsdale not giving up on that. That's a, quite an interesting duel, that, as Jane has had to help out defensively. Less than two minutes left in the period. Becca Borman collects. And Taylor Lonsdale slips it forward nicely to Bryony Watson. Puck just, just looking on him on the centre red line, but... Again, it's two against one here for the Wolves momentarily or temporarily as 
Domit tries to get it under control, but Alex Brow will come across. Well, almost stopping along the boards. No whistle, though. And the Taylor Lonsdale will control. They've had possession in the offensive zone quite a bit in the game, so again, it's been relatively evenly matched as Kenny Tuttle sense the danger from Becca Borman's fast skating closed her off, shut the door Caitlin Eastwood will Jazz Adams in the low slot either them or the team are playing any favours but uh, anyway, no change to the scoreline but another thoroughly entertaining 20 minutes of hockey we'll be back in three minutes time, please don't go anywhere Welcome back to Hillheads then, where it's still Beacons 3, Grimsby Wolves 2. Another excellent period of hockey was had in that uh, second session. A couple of power play opportunities for the Beacons, but Grimsby defended well and killed off both penalties. Let's see what this third period brings. I say Grimsby have already got a game under their belts for this season. This is the Beacon's first competitive fixture. 
Grimsby have their home opener next weekend, next Sunday, when they take on the Caledonia Steel Queens, who warmed up nicely by thrashing Witness Wild 10-1 last night. For anyone who tuned in to see it, former Beacons players Ashling Rafter and Jordan Troop, very much uh, part of that uh, success. And we wish both players all the very best for this season. Ricky Burnett works it free over to Alex Prowl, who sends it towards goal. Nicky Burnett will go again, looking for that stretch pass. Jazz Adams will close it down, but we'll see Caitlin Eastwood get there first. She gathers possession off the boards, comes to Joy Hurst, who collides into Laura Wardle. Gets a shot off there. It's uh, Caitlin Eastwood, who had time to pick a spot and fired into the back of a net. And that's a two-goal lead for the Beacons then, their largest lead of the game. But uh, I mean, it was uh, come about really with the Beacons sort of in the middle of a change there. And I don't know if both teams just seemed to switch off, but Caitlin didn't. She played to the whistle and executed a very well-timed shot. And she'll clear once again, the youngster. So just over a minute gone in this third and final period and the Beacons will increase their lead. For any Warriors fans tuning in, this is what a lead looks like at Hillheads. As Helen Ingham goes into the corner. Becca Boardman. Work back to the point. And Lisa Eden, who looks so at home on the blue line now. As I say, she was a forward up until about midpoint last season, but injuries forced to necessitated her to switch to uh, defence and says she enjoys, prefers playing there. And does so to great effect. One of the real unsung heroes is uh, Wolves looking to try and bank that one home. Bryony Watson with the effort. Yeah, Lisa Eden, very much one of the unsung heroes of this team, as Amelia Hutchison darts down the left wing. Another one of the success stories of last season with her and Caitlin coming through into the team, stepping up from the 16s. Great to see. Great to see that pathway from through the club as Iona Harrison gets a shot off. It takes a deflection off the uh, the glove, I think, of Ruth Palmer and loops up past her, and that's 5 2. A bit of a, a cruel bounce on her, but. Iona, who was looking for that goal all game, has got the breakthrough. And it's five goals to two. Iona's line will stay out there for the Beacons with Nikki Burnett's line out there with daughter Tilly and Francesca Shepherd alongside her. Iona will go again. Going to test the Wolves' resolve here, but doing well to shrink the uh, ice through that middle preventing the Beacons from advancing towards goal. Iona, who led the Beacons in scoring last year, will be looked upon again as that offensive leader. Uh, she cuts inside, gets a shot off again. It takes a really weird bounce on Ruth. She's not getting, although I was going to say, that did bounce away from dangerous time, but she's been unlucky with a couple of bounces in this period already. Dumps back in. That's going to be an icing call on the Wolves end, so that brings the play back down the other end of the ice. Yeah, a lot of uh, Grimsby without a lot of their top players for this game. It'll be interested to see what happens when the two sides meet again in Grimsby next month, when uh, presumably the Wolves will have a full bench. Eastwood, centre on the boards. Wardle will gather, sent back. An extra D pair in and a, an extra forward line can make all the difference. Uh, so that will be called for icing. Again, it will be brought back down. Wolves just trying to ease the pressure on their zone right now. They need to get out and advance towards goal. When you think the progress the club have made, they've only been around since 2018. And uh, great 
program that coach Ian Watson has put together really to bring this team together. His, uh, his daughter, who's the number 17, Bryony Watson. Again, a third icing call on the walls and then his son also plays hockey, plays for the Blackman Hawks. Another great uh, hockey family really from the Humber. Nicky Burnett just about wins the draw, gets it away, but the Beacons regain possession. A shot from Susie Rutherford on the point. Well, the Wardle helps it on its way. Then Nicky Burnett finds Francesca Shepherd. It's gathered by Georgia Wilkinson, who's uh, looked class all game, really. Georgia, she just continues to, to grow. That talent just develops game after game. Puck comes through into a neutral zone, collected by Susie Rutherford, who's been another success story over the last few years. I think this is her third season with this Beacon side, and again, her skating improves year after year. Looks so composed on the blue line. Again, Georgia Wilkinson not giving up. Works it back to Rutherford, who sends one on net. Francesca Shepherd will clear and then helped by one of her teammates. They'll try and push out. Caitlin Eastwood will regather. Almost five minutes played here in this third and final period. And a reminder that uh, Grimsby are back in action next week against uh, Caledonia Steel Queens. Look out on social media for any potential uh, streams of that game. And Beacons Elite were in action yesterday down in Slough. Sadly, I missed that one. And uh, I came away with a very respectable 5-1 loss to uh, last season's playoff champions. Took a Rachel Cartwright four-goal haul to uh, prove the difference. The GB International doing a, a fantastic uh, job in that game. But uh, the elite team back in action next Sunday as well when they take on Kingston Diamonds away so any hockey fans in the Humberside area you could quite easily take in both games Grimsby against Caledonia which is a 12 face off and then 4.30 across the river across the estuary you see Beacons against the Diamonds as Emma Taylor Lonsdale gets another shot on net forced away by Jade Yip who's Done a good job throughout on her debut. On clearance by the Beacons. That's going to be an icing on them. So uh, Grimsby having soaked up all that pressure early on in the period. Three or four icing calls against them and now can set up offensively in the Beacon zone. So Alonso will take the draw against Jane Skelton. They'll tie up. Beacon's looking to get it away, but Puck just getting caught under the feet of the official. Sent around the boards by Alex Prowl, kept in by Kearney Tull. In the corner now as the Beacons will work it free, release at Eden. Aaron Domit will collect. Uh, two against one there, but the Grimsby player not giving up. By Watson it was. It's Becca Borman looking to use that lightning pace, gets the puck under control, gets in on goal, fires, but good stop by Ruth Palmer, who never took her eyes off the shooter there. She made sure she got her body behind it. But good breakout by Becca Borman, takes the pressure off her zone. Good draw by Iona Harrison, gets it back to the point, and Caitlin Eastwood, who sends it around the boards. Puck comes out the zone, Eastwood will drop back. Francesca Shepherd. Now Eastwood back there, will control. 
Shepard sends it towards goal, flicked away by Yip. But to be on the back of a net. Nicky Burnett just sweeps that one narrowly wide of a post. It's nice setup play by Jazz Adams again, trying to pick out either Burnett or Francesca Shepard in the low slot. You know, an under down, good work from her on the far side. A nice delay pass by Burnett to find Shepard. You know, an under down again, we'll find Shepard this time. So it was Adams who was out on the left wing before. Laura Wardle forward, Shepard will tip in. I think uh, Nicky Burnett might have been in an offside position there, but either way, it would be to regain possession as Leon Harrison gets in behind, trying to set up Caitlin Eastwood with a backhand who's uh, up from the back. Does a good job of joining the rush, does Caitlin. On the far side, it's kept in by Susie Rutherford. She'll get another go at it. Winds one up. Oh, and that almost crept in. It came off the pad and then the post. I think uh, Roof did enough to kick it onto a post and back out. Lisa Eden's pass was just out of reach of her intended target. But again, Grimsby having to defend strongly here. Collected at centre red by Susie Rutherford. It's been a good shift from her. And she's had a couple of good efforts on that. Well, the water will clear. Susie Rutherford will go again. Nice hands from her. Oh, it was a, turned into a nice pass out wide. And a shot from Tanya Royce up on one foot there. She got that shot off. Almost one of the figure skating moves there. She released the puck. Very... Uh, Artistic it was in her execution. Shot comes down, or sorry, the effort really. It was a dump in on net rather than a shot, but uh, Beacons will regather. And the Taylor Lonsdale will gather, cuts inside, gets a shot off. It's blocked well by Lisa Eden, but then followed up with a poke check, gets it away. Bryony Watson will drop back. With 10 minutes left in the game, it's still 5-2 Beacons. Oh, and that makes it six with Joy Hurst. The captain has got her goal. And after what was a frustrating season for her last year, she's back amongst the goals. She scored the only goal for the Beacons against the Wolves here last season. She's now got number six. But, uh, I mean, the scoreline has gone up somewhat in this final period, but it was 3-2 heading into it. And I think in the end, tired legs tell. But uh, Emma Taylor-Lonsdale doing a good job at driving her team forward once again. This line has been uh, very strong all game for Grimsby offensively. I think they both have, really. As, uh, the Nikki Burnett line has to do maybe a little bit more defensive work and uh, the offensively this, this top line has caused issues for the Beacons. So that first period was a fantastic game of hockey. Or fantastic period of hockey, I should say, as the shots floated in. Ruth Palmer will stop it. We're 9.13 to go. Roof, who's from Mansfield and uh, grew up really with the uh, Nottingham system, played rec for a number of years and then was asked to uh, to help the Wolves out last season and did a fantastic job. She was very much the reason, or a major part of the reason why the Wolves come away with a draw here last year. Shot from Susie Rutherford. It hits Kenny Turrell full force in the uh, ankle, I think. She's grimacing a little bit. But did her job in stopping the puck. There's Evan Domit, nice pass forward to Emma Teller Lonsdale, who's looking to get in behind. She's got a bit of support with Bryony Watson. She'll go it alone. Floats one over the top of the outstretched glove of Jade Yip. Trying to work it back from the boards. Turrell will go again, it's kicked out by 
Shane Skelton. Again, Kearney Turwell doing a good job of stopping the breakout from Becca Boardman. And then Domit, who for me has to be in contention for a player of the game as well. Both her and Emma have been very strong going forward. Alex Brown sends a cross. Oh, it's going to be cool for an offside as Caitlin Eastwood carries in. Not quite sure who was offside there. Presumably it was Iona Harrison, but looking at where her feet were positioned, it looked like she was still on the blue line, but perhaps it was just in the build-up to that. But it looked marginal either way with 7.45 to go. The draw by Iona Harrison, but a little bit of a despondent shrug has maybe put a little bit too much, put too much mustard on that cutback and forced the team to retreat. But she'll get the puck back from Paige Brooks. Puts inside, gets a shot off. That's a lovely glove save by Ruth Palmer. Uh, and you can see her D straight over there to congratulate her, both Leona Underdown and Laura Wardle appreciating that save. That's certainly a confidence boost of that as Ruth made that one look easy. Nice cut back from Iona, shot from Caitlin Eastwood. Shot through traffic, turned aside by Ruth again. But back, it will come back out, collected by Alex Brown. Dumped back in. To... Tilly Burnett picked out by Jade Wheeler as her uh, first game back in over a year Jazz Adams will enter the zone Brooks picks out Wheeler okay. forward to Iona Harrison who shoots and that's another lovely glove save by Ruth Palmer but the net might be off slightly. As we get uh, DJ Shacks, uh, the officials have uh, noticed it now. Lisa Calvert readjusting the net. DJ Shacks at Dance Tune, which uh, for anyone who would like to check out his uh, video he filmed here at the Whitley Bay, I think it's on YouTube, and it involves our very own Iona Harrison who uh, puts a decent hip check in on Santa Claus in that one so it's a good bit of fun please do check that one out work back to the blue line collected by Leona Underdown or oh, Georgia Wilkinson no steals in great uh, well well she read that really well as she looked to capitalize on it Islay North End just unable to keep it in put coming out at two over with force she has to retreat with less than six minutes to go. Again, another good shift by Georgia, who's got the A on her jersey permanently this season. Did get called up as an assistant captain on a number of occasions towards the second half of last season, but great um, honour for them. And as I say, it's, as I said earlier in the broadcast, it's just reward really for the progress that she's made. Collected by Grimsby then, Emma Taylor Lonsdale tripping up. She's quite sure she tripped over a puck itself there, but Got her feet in a bit of a tangle there. Becca Bournemouth will dart out wide, gets a bit of space for herself, but good challenge that by Ellen Ingham. It's cleared, comes back to Caitlin Eastwood. Back to Becca Boardman. She's on a two-way with Solway Sharks this season, so good opportunity for her as well as she continues her development. She's still one of the younger players on the team, Becca Boardman. Shot from distance, goes through traffic, just wide of the goal. Oh, 
Oh, well, that was just about kept inside. Alex Browles pass to Caitlin Eastwood. Kearney Tyrrell couldn't quite take the puck off of there, and the yeah. shot from Eastwood sails over the top of the goal, but she was going to chance at another effort there. Already got one goal this afternoon. And Boardman couldn't get a shot off. It was good defending by Hannah Ingham once again. Right, Watson sends Emma Taylor Lonsdale away. She's in on goal. Can she finish? Oh, pad save by JG. Follow up shot. Amanda come off the base of a post there from Brian Watson. Good opportunity for Grimsby to cut the arrears there. But we're going to get a call. It's going to be for, presumably, for a dead puck. 3.46 to go. It's a, it's a 6 2 lead for the Beacons, but Grimsby have had their chances. And up until this final period, were very much in it at a one goal game. And as Iona Harrison looks to break away here, she'll use that pace to get in behind, but great challenge there by Kearney Tuvel. Vital poke check to get it away. And then we'll get another go at it. Finds Paige Brooks. Good challenge by Emma Taylor Lonsdale to work the puck back free. And she'll look to advance as she squeezes along the boards in front of her own bench. Come on, Beacons will come back. Brooks will feed Harrison. Gets a shot off, but is forced wide. The net's back off it. It's Morins. Which presumably Lisa Calvert has spotted because she's stood right next to it. Yeah, now she's going to blow the whistle. 2.45 to go. I think she was just waiting for the opportune moment. The putt was over on the far side and waiting to see what would develop before blowing the whistle and reattaching the goal. But as we know, that goal has worked loose over the last few years. Shot through traffic, turned aside by Ruth Palmer. 2.36 to go. Joy Hurst behind the back of the net works it back to Georgia Wilkinson. Over onto the far side, Jazz Adams works it back out. Eastwood will gather. Turns one way around the next and cuts back inside. Nice hands from her once again. Picked off and cleared. Comes back to Alex Browell on the centre red line. She'll get another go at it. Will Alex tips it back in. Two minutes to, to go in the game. Eastwood will drop back. Known as Caitlin Jones last season. Also known as Cat for short. There's Georgia again. Nice hands darts past one defender. Gets a shot on net. Puck bounces up. Rides up really over the pads. Roof will cover up. And we're going to face off in the Grimsby zone then with just over a minute and a half to go. Face off on the far side. Jane Skelton with the draw, but Matilda Lonsdale equal to her. Work back to Lisa Eden, back to Islay Northend. Didn't quite get the shot off, but quick as a flash. Grimsby looking to get a break on here. Nice releasing pass to find Roy Watson, but again, the puck just riding up off a stick again. I think it was Emma Taylor Lonsdale with that pass out on the right wing boards. Taylor Lonsdale will go again as Jane Skelton puts a challenge in on her. Almost put her over the Zamboni entrance boards there. And I think Jane is going to earn herself a trip to a box with a minute and ten to go. That's been an interesting duel throughout between those two. But a first power play of the game then for Grimsby Wolves. Uh, 
Emma Taylor Lonsdale will take the draw against Tanya Royce. Works it back to Tilly Burnett, who gets a shot on net, forces Jade Yip to play it away with a stick. So all floats one in, big rebound come out to Emma Taylor Lonsdale right in front of her row and tries to squeeze it in on the near side. Becca Borman gets a piece of it and try and ease it away, but Tilly Burnett does a good job of keeping it inside. Now the Beacons will break out with Tanya Royce. Good poke check by Kearney Turrell. Fry Watson with a good four check. Helen Ingham to Tilly Burnett. Now Emma Taylor Lonsdale. Nice reverse pass by Kearney Turrell. Cleared along the boards. 22 seconds remain, and Helen Ingham will control to Bry Watson. Maybe one last push for the Wolves to get a goal back. And Matilda Lonsdale works it back to Bry Watson, forces a rebound from the shot. Kearney Turrell from the point gets the shot away through traffic, cleared though. Well defended by the Beacons with two seconds to go. That will do it then. A 6 2 win for the Beacons. They get their season up and running with a win. It's, uh, well, you look at the score and you say it's tough on Grimsby. They've played their part in this one. Tired legs played a part in the third period, there's no doubt about that. But um, for the players that were here, that's a huge effort and something to continue to build on for them. as the handshakes take place between the coaches and likewise with the players. Um, well, it's a difficult one, I think, for for Whitley to, to give a single, pick a single person out. I don't even think I'm going to attempt it. I think it's been a, a pretty good performance, team performance all around. Um, the goal scoring was spread amongst the team as well. You'd have to say Jade Yip coming in on our first game as uh, probably in contention as well because Grimsby did have some chances but a very difficult one to call for Grimsby well Emma Taylor Lonsdale is very much the heartbeat of that team offensively and she was at the uh, forefront of everything that the team did well going forward so I'd have to have her in contention Erin Domit was fantastic as well got a goal and um I think you would have to say that uh, she, you know, she was a live wire. She deserves a uh, mention. And I thought Francesca Shepherd on that second line was always offered something defensively. Grimsby was strong as well. I know the six-two scoreline would probably belie that somewhat, but actually, I thought, you know, there were some good defensive plays throughout. So uh, could be any one of the defenders could be in contention. Not uh, a bit vague. I've kept it for this one, but. Um, to say it's um, overall I thought both teams contributed to what was a good game of hockey and just before the player presentations Adam as well there's been a few comments on the stream and just to say as well a very happy birthday to you commentating on this game uh, and a uh, little bit of birthday luck as well <laughs> well thank you for that thank you for everyone who uh, got in touch uh, anyone who knows I wasn't feeling very well this week particularly yesterday when I was hoping to make the trip down to Slough. I'm a lot better today, thankfully, hence why I'm here. And what better way to have uh, to spend your birthday to watch uh, a game of hockey between two very good teams. And it is going to be Emma Taylor Lonsdale to get the Player of the Game award for the Grimsby Wolves. No real shock or surprise there. She was fantastic throughout. And uh, I don't think she deserved to be on the losing side. And Jane Skelton. And, uh, well, again... Uh, an obvious choice in many ways as I said it was a good team performance for Beacons but Jane puts a, you know she did look a cut above at times and her leadership is going to be vital so congratulations to both players very well deserved and uh, congratulations on the Beacons for their first win of the season and their first game of the season please keep an eye out for social media updates for the next game that we shall, we shall be bringing you but the Beacons Elite are back in action next Sunday when they make the relatively short trip down to Hull. So please do tune in for that one. I'm hoping to be there to bring you that. So uh, 
for the time being. It's been an absolute pleasure calling this game for you. Thank you and good afternoon.